Hi, I'm Laura. Um, some of you may know me as the Pottery Tutor here at Logelli Centre. Um, I've been invited along to make a short tutorial uh, on a piece of art or craft project you can do at home using things that you're going to have laying around the house. Uh, I'm going to be showing you how to make some homemade notebooks. Notebooks are always useful for lots of different things. I use them myself for gardening notes, for keeping record of art, ideas for art projects. Um, and there's also a lot of talk nowadays about the usefulness of journals for mental health. Um, a lot of people find that having a book that they can doodle, write, draw, collage, whatever they feel like doing in, can be a really good way to manage their emotions. Uh, there aren't any really rules to what you can include. Some people like to do lots of writing, some people just draw. Um, it's worth having a look online if you do feel that you're having a bit of a hard time during lockdown, like a lot of us are. <laughs> A uh, journal might be a really useful project to get into and help you get through that. Um, I'm going to start off really by showing you how there are a lot of different materials you can use for this. Now some examples here of ones I've made, um, covers are, tend to be made from any cardboard you happen to have hanging around the house. And again the pages can be made from any kind of paper you have. This one I have here, which is my garden notebook, you can see I've used paper that came as packaging in an Amazon parcel. And I'm sure you'll have loads of stuff like that coming along as we're all ordering from home. Um, this one I didn't iron my pages, you can see they're very crinkly because I don't mind that and I'm quite a messy person but if you're a bit more of a tidy nature you could iron them and cut them very neatly. Um, the covers, again you can use anything you have laying around at home. These two here are show examples of using collage, using bits from magazines, um, advertising, brochures, things like that. I quite like using fabric, it's a good way to use up either fabric that's a bit too delicate to sew with or things that you just small scraps you have left over from other projects. This one's actually from an antique sari. Um, I've used a ribbon to help close it shut. Now I have a thing about books that tie shut, I really like them because I stuff loads of extra bits of paper inside my notebooks and they tend to fall out if I don't have something tying them shut. Um, now this example here uh, is a little ocean themed notebook I made quite a while ago and with this one I glued onto the cover, first of all covered it with sand which I did by coating the cover in PVA glue. I then used some bit stronger glue to glue on various stones, pebbles and things I found on the beach. Um, this one's made using watercolour paper because I knew I was going to paint in it so I've made sure I've used sturdy paint, uh, paper that will take watercolours and various pens and mediums. Uh, so it's quite fun to have a journal that you can explore a particular theme in and if you do have a theme you want to explore you can obviously match your cover to that if you'd like. Uh, the piece here, which is, hadn't been made into a completed book yet, but this is an example of a cover made from fabric. Um, this was a part of a sample I made uh, for a textile art project and I had lots of off cuts left over so they're quite nice to use for covering books. For this section I'm going to show you how to make, uh, this is your stack of pages. Now you can make the pages whichever size you want. It's nice to make a, a book that fits the size you want if you want something small pocket sized or something a bit bigger. Um, something around about an A5 size is quite a, a useful size to have but I tend to fold my paper to get the best use out of what I have available. So really you just need to end up with a stack of pages folded in the middle. And you can see I've made three marks on this page, one directly in the middle and then two equally spaced apart, a good way in from the end. The next thing you need is a piece of cardboard which is slightly bigger than your stack of pages. Now you can see here I've used a bit of a Rice Krispie box. You can use any kind of card for this if it's uh, thin enough that you can bend and fold it easily, which a serial card is, and you can use it in one piece, fold it in the middle. I stick some tape down the middle of the spine of my book because that just reinforces the paper or card where you're stitching through. I put one on both sides but I've kind of done one this side so you can see how to fold the ends over. You have the other option is if you want to use a stiffer card. You can cut card out with a knife and join two separate pieces with a strip of tape or fabric in the middle that allows you to bend and it's also a lot easier to sew through that part than if you're using really thick cardboard. Um, the next step is to decorate your cardboard cover. Now there's lots of different ways you can do this. You can cut a piece of fabric and stick it over as I did for this one. 
You can also use one whole image, a piece of uh, wrapping paper. Um, you can use old discarded art projects, which I've used quite a lot to cover old books. You can collage together pictures from magazines, whatever you have to hand. Don't worry about, um, do to have a bit of excess around the edges so that you can then trim it neatly and you can fold your edges over to neaten off the inside. So once you've stuck that down, you can then tidy up the inside of the book by adding a piece of paper to the inside cover. So I also, by the way, like to paint an extra layer of PVA glue over the outside of mine because it just makes it a little bit more hard wearing and robust. So the next step really is the last piece is to sew your pages, your stack of pages that we've already got marked here with our three dots, sew them into our cover. Now I've made myself here a nice little quirky kind of steampunk gothy kind of cover, which is kind of my style, um, by randomly <laughs> assembling bits of uh, paper I had in the cupboard and images from magazines. Uh, now you can see this one is all finished and ready to go with its inside cover. And if I match, get my pages nice and tidy, and if you lay that on there, you can see it's just a little bit bigger than the inside stack of pages. Now you can use lots of different things to sew your book with. Um, for example, if you look at the one with the fabric, I've used a matching ribbon. That's quite nice. Um, I also like to use embroidery cotton. And you can mix together. I'd use about six strands so it's nice and thick and strong. You can twist the string together as you're sewing. It gives you like a nice barley twist effect. And then I've plaited the ends. You do have the option if you want to of adding some beads or you know anything onto the end of that for extra decoration. Keeping it simple for this one, I'm going to use some good old garden string. You want to use a needle that has a big enough eye that you can thread whatever your sewing material through. This is, happens to be an upholstery needle, but a, a darning needle, like the kind you would use for sewing with wool, that would work. If you don't have a darning needle, you can pierce holes, and if you're using something that's in one piece like ribbon, you can sort of push the ribbon through the hole with the end of a pen or pencil, but it is a bit fiddly. So if you have a needle, all the better. So to start sewing my book, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure everything's nicely lined up. Uh, the first thing I'll do is I'll pierce some holes through to make sure it's easy to sew. Now I'm using uh, a potter's needle <laughs> because I happen to have these laying around at home. If you don't, anything will do. Um, a braddle or and even a, just a sharp darning needle you can push through. So make a hole where you've made your dots and make sure you've gone all the way through your stack of paper. And through the spine of your book. And when you've po poked it through, give it a good wiggle, make sure that your holes are kind of opened up enough that you're going to be able to get your darning needle through there. Now, I've already pierced the holes in these, but I'm just going to check that that's gone all the way through. It's a little bit slidey. So I've made sure that's gone through and everything's lined up. So my holes are in and I'll make sure I'll poke through each of the holes. So just watch your fingers doing that part. Right, first step, turn the whole power stack over and you want to start by passing your threaded needle through the centre hole from the outside to the inside. You can go through the cover first for the first step. And then want to go through the middle hole on my stack of pages. Work that through. Once you've got the first one in, it will help you to keep it all lined up. Now, I'm going to now go through one of the other holes. It doesn't matter which one. You can work your way through the stack of pages and to the outside of the book and pull it through. Now, when you do this, you want to make sure you leave yourself a nice long tail. The next step is to go back again through the outside, the remaining hole, and through the stack of pages. Wiggle it through, make sure you've gone through them all. The last bit, 
go back through the middle hole again and come out the same place that you came in. So now what I have is my two ends. I'm going to take my needle off and I'm going to make sure that my two ends are either side of the long stitch running through the middle. I'm going to pull it nice and tight and just form a knot over that middle piece. And there we have it. Your book is finished and you can put it together and if you want to tie your book shut, use your pieces of string. If you want to add tassels, beads, buttons, whatever you want onto the end of your string, adds extra decoration. You may find it helpful to put your book underneath a heavy weight for a few days just to keep it nice and flat if you want it to be nice and flat. But other than that, there you go, one homemade scrap notebook. Something I like to add into my notebooks because I like to collect all sorts of odds and ends of paper and I tend to shove them into my notebooks and diaries and they tend to fall out. So in this I've added a pocket on the inside. I've used a clear piece of plastic that I think came off the outside of an old diary or notebook um, and because it's clear I can see what's in it which is handy and I've just taped it down in a rather sloppy manner with some insulating tape there. Uh, the strings themselves that I've used to stitch, uh, leaving them long so you can tie the book shut is another useful addition because it means things are less likely to fall out. You could, if you wanted to, add an extra string or a piece that kind of flaps over the inside that you could use as a bookmark if you think that would be useful. Okay, now you've seen uh, the tutorial. I'm hoping it gives you lots of ideas for notebooks you can make at home with things that you might otherwise throw away. It'd be a really nice idea if you can use your notebooks to plan some of your ideas for the Fife Art Competition coming up. Uh, and if you do, uh, we'd like to see what you come up with. Remember, if you do make a book that is an art piece in its own right, like this one where you have a theme and you fill the book with your ideas and drawings, that can be entered into the competition as a piece of art. We'd like to see what you come up with and I'm looking forward to seeing your art books or even just seeing, hearing that if you've enjoyed making your notebooks. Thank you very much.